Hi, welcome to Touch Plus. My name is Bob Flisser. If you need to borrow money, whether for a business purpose or a personal purpose, you'll probably take out a loan and then pay it back periodically, typically every month, but for the purposes of these calculations, it could be every week, could be every year, doesn't really matter. What you want to find out probably is when you make those payments, how much will those payments be? And just for the simple sake of argument, I'm going to assume that it's monthly. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you could do that calculation in Excel, and it could be any version of Excel, Windows or Macintosh, or the web version of Excel. You could also do it on Google Sheets if you like using Google. I'm also going to show you, and this is something that will work in the desktop version of Excel only and not in the web version of Excel or Google Sheets, is how you can substitute different values. Let's say maybe you can get a lower interest rate or you can take out a larger loan amount or some variant there and kind of spread out on a table and see with different values what that monthly payment is going to be. We accomplish this using the payment function. And the payment function has five parameters to use. First parameter is interest rate. And that's going to be the yearly interest rate. So we'll need to convert that to months. I'll show you that in a bit. The second parameter is the number of periods. And as I said, I'm going to consider it months. The third parameter is the initial amount that you borrow. You might want to think of that as the present value. The fourth parameter is the future value, and that is the amount when finished. Now, that's an optional parameter because the function is going to assume that when the whole thing is done, when you've paid everything back, there's zero left. You've paid everything, and it's a zero amount. By the way, you don't have to do this from the perspective of you as the borrower. You could do this from the perspective of you as the lender. So if you're using this for various types of commercial paper, it is possible that the future value will be a non-zero number. And the fifth and last parameter, it's also optional, is what they call the payment type. Payment type is simply, is the payment being made at the beginning of the period or the end of the period? Think of like if you have a mortgage or you pay your rent, are you paying at the beginning of the month or the end of the month? The syntax for this function is simply equals PMT, and then in parenthesis, we have our parameters, rate, comma, period, comma, present value, comma, and then, the, as I said, those last two parameters are optional, future value and type. And like any function you use in Excel or Google, you have to put a comma after each parameter. Okay, let's go do it. On the Tuts Plus website, you can download the Excel worksheet that I created for you called Loan Payments. If you don't have access to it, or maybe you just don't want to do it, you could just key in what you see on my screen here. By the way, this workbook has four worksheets. Right now, I'm on the worksheet called Basic. I mentioned before about substituting values. We'll go over to the multiple values workbook. So these two are yellow. You notice that I have two worksheets here that are completed, and those are colored green. So those have the answers already done. So this way, you could do it whichever way you like. So I'm going to start off here on the Basic worksheet. And we'll click over here in B10. So we have, these are kind of typical values, at least at the time of this recording. If you're going to buy a house, what kind of numbers you might be looking at. We have a loan amount of 300000 Could be US dollars, Australian dollars, yen, kroners, whatever currency you want to work with is fine. A yearly interest rate of 4%. As I said, we have to convert that to months. Years to pay back is 30. So again, we have to convert that to months, right? Because there's 12 months in a year. And those optional parameters I was saying before, the value when payments are over is zero. Now, if you leave that parameter off, if you don't put that in the function, the worksheet is simply going to assume it's a zero anyway. I have this here really for your reference. And then beginning and end of the period, we'll see that in a bit. So let's just start with the function. I'll type equals PMT and open up the parenthesis. And you see Excel gives me a little bit of syntax help. So the first thing it wants to know is the rate. So here's the rate. I'll click on cell B4. So as I said, this is the yearly rate. We want to convert this to monthly rate. So I'm going to divide by 12. So I'll just tap in a forward slash and a 12. And now I put in a comma because I'm ready for the next parameter. And that's the number of periods. Well, I have here 30 years. So I'll click that 30 and I'll just multiply that by 12. So I'll say times 12 because I want all of those months and not all of those years, comma. And now the present value. So the present value, that's how much we're borrowing, 300,000. So I'll click on cell B3. So these last two parameters, as I said, are optional, but I'm going to use them just so you can see it. I'll type in a comma. 
The future value is zero. As I said before, if I didn't put that in, the function would assume it's zero anyway, comma, and here's the type. You see it actually tells us. Zero means the payment is made at the end. One means the payment is made at the beginning. So you could double click either of these. You could type in zero or one. I'm just gonna click this here. And that's it. I'm gonna close the parenthesis, press enter. And now I see that the monthly payment is $1,427. Now, if you're seeing this for the first time, you might think, well, wait a minute, that's a negative number. Why am I getting a negative number? And the answer is that's cash flowing out of your pocket. So it's a negative. Now, if you think this looks a little odd and you want to make that look like a positive number, there's a couple of things you could do. One thing is you could go over here to that loan amount and you could make that a negative number, but that might look weird also. So here's a little trick. Let's just double click the formula here. We'll double click the cell so we can edit the formula. And that loan amount, that present value, 300,000, that cell B3. So let's go here into the formula, click there before the B, or before the B3, and type in a minus sign. So we're sort of secretly making that a negative number and enter that. And now we have this looking like all positive numbers. So if you're going to borrow $300,000 at 4% yearly interest, pay it back the beginning of every month for 30 years, every month you're going to have to write a check for about $1,427. But as I said, maybe you can qualify for a lower interest rate. Maybe you have to pay a higher interest rate. Maybe you want to borrow a different amount. Let's go over here in the same workbook to the multiple values sheet. And once again, if you don't or can't download this, you could just key in what I have here. And you see we have basically the information here is exactly the same. We're going to, just for practice, we'll put in the monthly payment again in cell B10. But now we got some extra stuff here. Stretched across row 10, I have different possibilities of present value. That is, different possibilities of money that we might borrow. And going down here in column B is possibly different interest rates. We started off with 4%, but maybe you can pay less, maybe you have to pay more. So for practice, let's first put in that monthly payment again. So we'll say equals PMT, open the parenthesis. There's the yearly rate divided by 12, comma, the number of periods multiplied by 12, comma. We need that present value. I'll just put in a negative here and then click that present value, comma. Future value is zero, comma. And we're paying the beginning of every month. So I'll click that, close the parenthesis and enter. So once again, we see that same number. Now, here's where things get really cool. By the way, this is something that will work only in the desktop versions of Excel, Windows, and Macintosh. This, will, this is an advanced feature, so this will not work in the web version of Excel. This will not work in Google Sheets, as you know that. So I'm going to select this whole area, starting with B10, starting with that payment, down and across... Okay, so now we have it selected, and in Excel, let's go over here to the Data tab. I'm running on Windows, so over here on the right, I have this button called What If Analysis. If you're doing this on the Mac, the What If Analysis button is going to be somewhere on the left side of the ribbon bar. I'll click over here, and I'll choose Data Table, and I get this little dialog box. These two labels really are not uh, very elucidating. Row Input Cell and Column Input Cell. Row Input Cell means this. We have a row across the table, really a row of column headers. This is substituting for what? Substituting the present for the present value for the amount that we're borrowing. That is in cell B3. So for this row input cell, you want to click on that cell B3. Now let's go down here for the column input cell. The column, we have a bunch of headers here going down this column. Those are substitutes for what? They're substitutes for the interest rate, which is in B4. So for the column input cell, you want to make sure to click cell B4. That's it. Click OK. So now we have our answers, but it might be a little easier if we can format it. I'm going to start with this first number here. Notice so I'm not clicking on the 200,000. I'm not clicking on the 3%. I'm clicking on this 841, and I'm just going to click and drag with that big old mouse pointer plus sign down to the end. I'll go to the Home tab, and I'll click the comma button or comma stop. By the way, rather than clicking it, I want to show you a nice keyboard shortcut. I'm going to press Control shift exclamation mark If you're doing this on the Mac, it would be Command-Shift-Exclamation-Mark. And that's the shortcut to format is comma style. So now I know, I'll just click somewhere here at random. I know that if I'm going to borrow $250,000 at 3 and 3 quarters percent, 
and pay it back monthly for 30 years, every month I have to fork over $1,154. So that is the payment function and the data table feature. You could use the data table feature for all sorts of things. It doesn't have to be for the payment function or even financial use. You could use it for all sorts of things. I find it very useful. Just one thing to remember, if you use this data table feature, the initial function that you're using must be in the upper left corner of this table when you select. So I hope you found this useful and you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.